Welcome back to Cinema Bucket List, the show where we work our way through the 1001 movies you must see before you die, an ever-growing list of 1,245 must-watch films for all cinephiles. As always, I am Mike, and I have returned with 13 more films from the list. Possibly one of the more popular films on the list, this 2014 biopic about the late Stephen Hawking was nominated for five Oscars the year it was released, and Eddie Redmayne ended up winning Best Actor in a leading role for his incredible performance of the famous cosmologist. With Felicity Jones as the unflappable Jane Hawking, this film is as much of a story of love as it is a story about a man overcoming insurmountable odds to go down as one of the greatest minds to have ever lived. While parts are certainly filled with tropes and cliches, there is enough there to make this film stand out from other biopics. I'd like to think that's reason enough to keep it on the list. My name is Stephen Hawking. It's American. Is that a problem? This is quite possibly the most important documentary ever made. In just about 33 minutes, the collection of archive footage from concentration camps has more effectiveness than an entire year of Holocaust history in high school would have. It will come as no shock to you when I say this is not a fun film to watch, but it should be required viewing for everyone, not just cinephiles, to ensure this never happens again. This film should be on every list. Les noms aussi sont déposés. Des noms de 22 nations. Ils remplissent des centaines de registres, des milliers de fichiers. Un trait rouge biffe les morts. Des déportés tiennent cette comptabilité délirante, toujours fausse, sous l'œil des SS et des capots privilégiés. Well, any movie after Night and Fog is going to give us emotional whiplash, so let's press on. The first of a handful of black exploitation films on this list. Superfly was surprisingly intense. Not that I thought all black exploitation films would all be campy, but before this, my only exposure to them was P.D. Wheatstraw, The Devil's Son-in-Law, Blackula, and Mario Van Peebles' film about his father Melvin making Sweet Sweetback's badass song. And Black Dynamite, of course, which is a parody of black exploitation films. Okay, maybe that's a decent amount of exposure for some random white guy in the suburbs of Philly, but my point is, with a small budget that is comparable to $390,000 in today's dollars, this was incredible incredibly well made. Ron O'Neill delivers a fantastic performance and the backdrop of New York and all of its 70s grittiness paired with good writing and a killer soundtrack. This is a crime thriller that could rival the likes of The French Connection. It's a solid film that stays on my list for sure. Please now, hey, come on, put the gun down, please man. I'll kill this nigga of yours. Let's get him. We're just trying to get out. Please, now, don't kill him. You know what it means. Try and get out, huh? Horror films from the 70s are hit and miss. They're either still very effective due to their nuance or completely laughable by today's standards. Don't Look Now is a part of the former. Never going balls to the wall in horror effects, but rather sticking to the psychological side of horror that piques the audience's paranoia, it has withstood the test of time with the beautiful yet claustrophobic setting of Venice. Literally taking any and all escape routes from its protagonists, Nicholas Roeg immerses you into Donald Sutherland's growing paranoia. It is wonderfully intense and deserves its spot on the list. There are few films that I have actively avoided quite like Lolita. Its reputation precedes itself, to the point that when you hear what Jeffrey Epstein's private plane was named, you realize he was hiding in plain sight all along. The film along with the book are written in such a way that whatever any given reader or viewer takes away from it says more about them than it does the material itself. If you are disgusted and creeped out by the pathetic man telling you his story, great, you are a sane individual. If you feel sorry for him in any way, the police are on their way to you right now. All kidding aside, Kubrick's direction is masterful as always, and the performances are great all around. But the issue at hand is whether or not such a controversial film deserves to be on the list given its problematic nature. If so many people didn't misunderstand it, I would say absolutely. But when handling such sensitive topics as child molestation and human trafficking in such a hilariously sardonic way, you have a responsibility to make sure the point won't be missed. Kubrick himself had stated that if he had fully appreciated the moral implications from adapting 
this novel, he probably wouldn't have tackled the project. Don't get me wrong, it's a good film, but certain people have made it problematic. I personally wouldn't keep it on. I would replace it with The Hunt, directed by Thomas Vinterberg and starring Moss Mikkelsen. While the film is about a school teacher wrongfully accused of abusing a young girl, it handles the topic much more gracefully. Moss Mikkelsen delivers an incredible performance. It is also the best Christmas film ever made. Fight me, diehard fans. You wanna stay with this filthy boy? That's what it is. Yes! Why did you leave Shut me your alone? mouth, you hard don't little tell me what psychopath. Do. You're I promise you one thing. Great. You're not gonna see these filthy boys anymore, I'll tell you that. Unless I disliked them completely or was underwhelmed by them, films less than 10 years old are difficult to discuss in regards to adding them to a bucket list or not. Joker is no exception. There is a lot of backlash around this film simply because some view it as a white incel manifesto, and that is a fair description. But I view it more as a condemnation of capitalism, where the poverty-stricken mentally ill can't get the help they need because funding was cut to social work programs. It is also an examination of how society pokes fun at those clearly with mental health issues by quite literally airing an embarrassing moment on TV for the sole purpose of belittling them. Director Todd Phillips gives a refreshing change of pace for his career, and Joaquin Phoenix delivers a career best performance. And regardless of how you feel about the film, the final 20 minutes are masterful filmmaking. Joker stays on my list. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash! Call the police, I'll Gene. tell you what you get! Call the police! Get what you fucking deserve! <laughs> Typically, I absolutely love noir films. There's something about the brooding detectives and the mystery surrounding a beautiful woman that just works. But Otto Preminger's Lara is simply unremarkable. It is incredibly obvious who the killer is from the first 30 seconds, yet it plays itself off like a mystery. Perhaps it is my natural distrust for posh people, but there wasn't a single moment I didn't know who did it. On top of that, there isn't a single bit of realistic police work, even when comparing it to other films of the time. And the titular character falling in love with the main protagonist is just laughable. It has decent performances, but that's about it. I'd remove this film and replace it with I Saw the Devil. This Korean film is more of a thriller than a noir, but it is incredibly effective and has more twists and turns than Laura does. I'm actually shocked it's not on the list already. I thought you'd like to know. We tested your shotgun. It isn't the one. Now that's what I call a typical move. A real key to the man's character. First he tells you that he thinks you're innocent, then proceeds to check up on you. It was only a matter of time before I hit a big series on this list. Here we go, four for the price of one. There is no question that the Star Wars franchise is iconic. Despite my personal feelings towards George Lucas and his genius or lack thereof, I have to give credit where credit's due. From the very first film, the world building and dialogue alone is incredible. He may have ruined his own films with unnecessary so-called enhancements, Han shot first, but the bones are still good. Every primary character, while being archetypes in the beginning, are memorable and each have their own arcs by the time Return of the Jedi rolls around. But while we no doubt have George Lucas, or mostly his editors, to thank for the success of the first film, there is a reason his prequels aren't on the list. Star Wars is most great when other people take ideas and characters he created and run with them. Sure, there are some bad examples that contradict this, but the best thing about Star Wars is the universe it creates. Even people who haven't seen the films can see a character and know what they're from. There aren't many franchises that iconic. But the question here is do all four of these films deserve a spot on the list? I think we can answer that while acknowledging the notable absence of The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. While the original trilogy is one complete story and deserves their spot, I feel the inclusion of The Force Awakens was a premature addition filled with optimism. It is clear episode 8 and 9 did not live up to the hype, and it'd be weird to have the first part of an incomplete story, so I'm removing The Force Awakens and adding Rogue One. In my opinion, Rogue One is the best Star Wars movie ever made. If you disagree with me, that's fine. That's just my opinion. On top of that, it moves cleanly into the beginning of A New Hope, so it makes a nice addition to the list in my mind. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough! He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Two Holocaust movies in one month? Are we trying to make me cry? 
Schindler's List is an undebatable masterpiece, and the fact that Spielberg made that in the same year that he made Jurassic Park is all you need in a debate on whether or not he is one of the best directors to have ever lived. This heartbreaking true story is filled with amazing performances from everyone even down to the extras. With beautiful cinematography and a heartbreaking score, Spielberg grabs you by the soul so you can experience even a small sliver of the pain Jewish people felt during this time. And Oscar Schindler's realization that he could have saved more people had he not lived so lavishly is portrayed so beautifully by Liam Neeson. This film is an obvious choice to keep on the list. Could have got more. Oscar, there are 1,100 people who are alive because of you. Look at them. If I made more money. <laughs> I threw away so much money. <laughs> you have no idea. Have you ever just gone into a movie knowing only the title and ended up watching a completely different film than what you were expecting? That was me with this film from Wong Kor Wai. With the title Chungking Express, I was expecting some gritty cop drama. Instead, this is a quite charming rom-com split up into two stories. I don't normally care for romantic films, but I quite enjoyed this. The first of the two stories, with Takashi Kaneshiro and Bridget Lin, is less typical for the genre than the second with Tony Leung and Fei Wong, but both had great comedic moments and did their own thing. Oddly enough, I enjoyed the story with a more typical meet cute. I thought Tony Leung and Fei Wong had great chemistry, and the will they won't they element actually felt like it could go either way. It's a fun film, and I'm keeping it on the list. <laughs> And that does it for episode 4 of the Cinema Bucket List. Have you started working your way through it? How many of them have you seen? What did you think of the films featured on this video and do you think they deserve to be on the list? Comment down below and share your thoughts and if you feel like it, give a like and subscribe. As always, I am Mike and I will be back next month with at least 10 more films from the 1001 movies you must see before you die. See you then.